Last week, I told you about how Donald Trump's divisive rhetoric has violent consequences. Well, America's Voice has tracked instances where Donald Trump, his supporters, or his staff members have either incited violence, harassed, or have uh, inspired hate across the country. And what they found is absolutely devastating. It confirmed what we suspected that Donald Trump has inspired hate across the country. So let's look at this. Uh, so when it comes to Illinois, college students spray paint slurs, swastika, and Trump on a chapel wall. This was on March 14th. Uh, Trump supporters harass immigration protesters in Iowa. Um, Iowa Republican backs ex executing undocumented immigrants. Not extreme at all. Uh, and also high school basketball players targeted by degrading Trump chants. Getting to Kansas, uh, Latino Muslim students attacked by Trump fan. Brown trash go home is what they said. Getting to Missouri, outside of a Trump rally, Trump supporters hurled racist homophobic slurs at protesters. In Kentucky, a black woman was physically and verbally assaulted by a group of white male Trump supporters. Uh, moving on to New York, Trump bodyguard punches a Latino man. This was September 3rd. Arab and Muslim protesters thrown out, thrown to ground at Trump event in New York. Uh, getting to Massachusetts, two Trump beat a Mexican. Two Trump beat a Mexican man. I think they mean two Trump supporters beat a Mexican man. Uh, in Boston, two brothers terrorize a homeless Latino man with a metal pipe, breaking his nose and leaving him with serious bruising across his ribs. Uh, two, Boston, two Boston Celtics fans kicked out of game after racist chant, Trump, Trump. In Virginia, Trump rally turns violent. Trump supporters push and spit on immigration protesters. We have in North Carolina, Trump supporters attacked the Latina demonstrators, ripped down their signs. In South Carolina, Puerto Rican high school student choked and grabbed while protesting at a Trump rally. We have uh, dozens of black students kicked out of a Trump rally in Georgia. Uh, tr a Trump supporter yells white power in Alabama. Black Lives Matter protester kicked, punched, and choked by Trump rally attendee. And in Florida, Latino protester dragged and kicked at a Trump rally. And a Breitbart reporter forcibly yanked by Trump's campaign manager. Michelle Fields, a former Breitbart reporter, was forcibly yanked during a press conference in Jupiter, Florida by Corey Lewandowski, Trump's campaign manager. He continues to deny that the incident occurred despite a photo of Fields' bruises and an eyewitness account by a Washington Post reporter. This is occurring all throughout the country because of Trump's divisive rhetoric. If a candidate doesn't try to tone down the violence and actually incites violence by telling people to punch protesters and kick them out and whatnot. That's really scary. The problem is that for the history of the United States, presidential candidates have always dealt with protesters. You can't blame this on the protesters. Now, I don't agree with them uh, going and disrupting uh, Trump's rallies and doing violence, but they do have a right to protest. It's called the First Amendment. You have your First Amendment right to assemble, but they also have their First Amendment right to do a counter-protest to a Trump rally. You don't have the right to assault them and, and actually cause physical harm to them. Trump is inciting not just violence, uh, but he's encouraging hate across the country. And... Americans love Trump, many of them, because now he made it socially acceptable to become overtly racist again. And when you say that Trump is using racially insensitive language, his supporters will retort by saying, well, how can you say that he's racist? He, he just wants to build a wall and kick out all 11 million undocumented immigrants. That's racist. You're targeting one group of people. You're trying to keep Mexicans out, one group, one racial group out of the country. It's not that he is saying, I want to kick out, you know, the Polish or the Irish. He is targeting brown people. Why? Because that's what gins up hate. And that hate galvanizes people to go out and support Donald Trump. He's retweeting white supremacists. He won't disavow David Duke in the KKK. I mean, he did, but it took him a while because he doesn't really want to do that. See, I don't know that his campaign would be as successful as it is, even if he has the economic populist message without the hate. That's what makes Trump very unique. People love that he just 
says what he wants and is polit politically incorrect, it's not okay for you to incite violence and gin up hate. That's not what this country needs. That's my thoughts on this. Trump is a scary candidate and this is direct evidence why that is the case.